So now, what is the third struggle? Given that we are quite in a westernized uh, society, uh, do you face those challenges? So I think this is like the biggest, for me, the biggest issue or the biggest challenge as a Muslim in today's world. Lah. I think we've seen it all. Uh, just just put it as what we see on our Netflix and all that, on how every series or dramas or movies are in indoctrinating the LGBT stance. And you know, on YouTube, everything, the kids are watching it. There's no control. Parents generally don't control or have not much control, although they, they have all the apps, but it's very difficult to really control. Um, the things kids watch that will shape a new generation of scholars, asatizas, uh, everything. It, it's going to affect, really it is. And that, that's the scary part. I think one of the biggest challenge, like for now, right, it's telling our own kids that this is not the religion, but then what they receive online and from their society and all that tells them differently. And how do we manage that? I think that's a real challenge. And we know the Western influence is very, very high. Sure. In in every like country in the world, people idolize the Western ideology, even in Singapore, right? You know, Christmas is like a every it's an annual uh, fatwa challenge uh, every year in Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, fatwa challenge. Uh, yeah, yeah, to, to put it mildly, because you know, each time people there will be one group of Muslims who say, Oh, it's fine to do it because we are in a multi-religious society, so we must respect the other culture. Then there will be another group in the group who say, No, it's haram, it's haram, it's haram. Basically, my position, of course, is is not allowed to celebrate Christmas. But at the same time, you don't have to like be full force in the face of the other person and say, no, it's haram, 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 please don't do this. You have to do it with more hikmah, right? I want to yeah. add to that because you were saying uh, how you don't celebrate it. At the same time, uh, you don't go around and saying haram to others. My my concern yeah. is how Asatizas today are openly wishing and celebrating it. And it yes. becomes the confusion on the on the people who are who don't learn about religion. You you get where I'm coming from? Yes, yes, I do. Like, I, we have this in Malaysia, so we do yeah. You this. open your IG and then they are all celebrating and like I'm like you don't have to do that. And that's where the confusion, like I said, these kind of yes. clashes really happen. My office is also predominantly a non-Muslim office. Mm-hmm. I'm the only Muslim in my whole entire workspace, mm-hmm. so. You 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 don't. I mean, I I personally feel there's no reason to do certain things, but sometimes mm-hmm. it feels that because of the pressure of like society, then Satisas go one step further to do other things. I I I can't elaborate this so much, but I'm mm-hmm. just saying that there are some who goes above and beyond to to make sure this Christmas thing is happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like to be so inclusive that you need to do so much, which I don't think you really need. Mm-hmm. I see where you're coming from. Uh-huh. Um, you know, Hafiz, in terms of like going above and beyond, because yes, I have seen um, some of our satizas who have been into the churches and actually, you know, sharing sort of the quote unquote spirit of Christmas and things like that, because they want to portray a certain. Um, image of inclusivity you know like like being inclusive like you know we are not against you technically we are brothers in faith because we we, we hold on to the same Abrahamic roots, roots right mm-hmm. um, and I can see that as a problem because uh, it blurs certain lines and especially for children who actually see this as growing up they might think that oh it's actually okay and normal and if they are not anchored enough in their own Iman uh, and faith, faith uh-huh. that it might sway them somewhat as they are growing up. So I can see that as a problem, but also at the same time, I see their perspective of wanting to bridge or portray like a, a society of harmony and yeah, people, you know, you know, like like I see both sides. So I think there are there is pros and cons to coming from both sides. So I think at the end of the day, it comes back down to, I guess how the child is actually being brought up in the household because I'm, I'm feeling it a lot more now because I have a son, right? And naturally, all these, you know, LGBT movements and things like that and even um, the most recent news, uh, I don't know whether you guys have read it but this was actually on our our Brita Harian, uh, you know, there were some initiatives from some of our uh, religious teachers in Singapore uh, fronting conversations with the LGBT community. I don't know exactly what 
is the goal they're trying to actually achieve, uh, whether or not to, whether the purpose is to make them um, included in the society or to actually be an avenue for them to actually reach out to. Uh, that part is not clear, but it was actually splashed all over the news saying that, you know, um, we are having conversations with this community. Uh, you know, and that was very worrying to me. You know, I had a lot of question marks in my head. I was like, okay, are we pushing boundaries here? You know, to me, that felt like because on dangerous whole, ground. Yeah, we are. We are really treading on dangerous grounds when it comes to this. You know, because especially like what Brother Hafiz has just shared that you know it's very prominent on Netflix or on YouTube. You know, this whole LGBT movement. You know, and things like that. So it's very. I know it's a very sensitive topic, right? I for one, I don't discriminate, but. I think in Islam there is black and white and when it comes to LGBT the stance is very clear it's black and white there's no grey okay this yeah. this I'm very clear right yeah. but for the new our younger generation who's bringing who is growing up because we were brought up in a generation where this was not a very big thing you know we know we know that this is black and white there's no grey but because of whatever that's happening in the media right now and all these things it it does concern me that you know our child might we are normalizing things yeah, that was point. previously very clear to us that mm. is why it's black and why it's white why it's right and why it's wrong yeah. we normalize it too much it becomes gray it becomes gray and then like <laughs> okay like you know so so how then do we deal with this so i think this is more of a struggle of today can struggle. i add to what you said because what yes. you said really summarized it quite well the way we portray all this mm. like celebration as something inclusive and common it may blur the line for kids to understand that actually mm. giving gifts is already a sunnah. What more do you need from there? So you should so, give gifts all the time, <laughs> not yeah. just during a particular celebration. Correct. Whatever celebration that you have, you you can you can teach the kids something in there lah, rather than enforcing or showing inclusivity by okay, mm. that, like what you said, splashing on the papers. This this is going to create the wrong mindset or image for our Muslim the society. Uh, impression as well yeah and also we need to be very clear on the difference between a cultural celebration and a religious one yeah. for example chinese new year is a cultural one i think over time uh, as we are more exposed to a global world society we we tend to want to include everything and we kind of forget our origins our, our natural heritage mm-hmm. so i guess there has to be a certain line drawn and of course we also need to be aware of what is originally ours and what we can't blur